pled guilty and testified against him. Dennis Kelher joins us now. Dennis, maybe let's expand here for a moment on how you feel about the co-conspirators in what had happened with FTX, even though that many of them had come forward early on, testified to a significant degree. Why should they face greater penalties in your view? Well, I'm, I'm not saying they should face greater penalties. I'm saying that they should be severely punished, but they should also be seriously rewarded for their cooperation. They materially helped the prosecution, they testified truthfully, and they facilitated the conviction and sentencing of who was the core kingpin here, Sam Bankman Freed. So I'm not in any way suggesting they shouldn't get leniency for what they've done. They definitely should, but they should also see a period of time behind jail bars. White collar criminals have to understand that they can't get a pass. We can't only be throwing crooks, white collar, I mean, blue collar street criminals in prison. The message has to be sent mm. to white collar criminals, not just the kingpins, but their enablers, that they need to go to jail for at least some period of time, as well as, by the way, they should be barred from the financial industry for life. Hmm. So, Dennis, um, are we talking, in your view, months or years here? What, in your opinion, would be fair for these co-conspirators? Well, it's hard to know from the outside because you don't have the probation reports. You really don't know what the prosecution knows in terms of how helpful they were relative to others. Um, but I would hope that they would all see at least 12 months inside a prison cell. Um, and that would be, of course, you know, a 90 percent reduction or some significant reduction from what they would otherwise get if they did not cooperate. So I think some, there's a balance, but you need more information than the public has is available to the public. When you think but also, let's remember, it's not just their co-conspirators. Um, there were dozens, if not hundreds, of others who helped Sam Bankman Freed and his co-conspirators um, do this crime and these many crimes over a long period of time. And the Southern District of New York should not just take the scalp of the kingpin and take care of the cooperating witnesses and then move on. There are a lot of other people involved here. And the Southern District of New York should also revisit its inexplicable decision to drop the campaign finance violations, the biggest campaign finance scandal since Watergate and actually may be worse, and they're dropping that investigation and charges. It makes sense not to prosecute Sam Bankman Freed at this point, but there were dozens and dozens, dozens of others who wantonly, criminally broke the campaign finance laws in this country to corrupt our election process and hijack the public's Dennis, agenda here. Dennis, let's speak more about the campaign finance violations. Because those uh, charges were dropped here, do you think that it has actually led to more of an influx of money from the crypto community into the, the federal system here? How do you really parse what is appropriate at this point when it comes to crypto money into politics versus versus what happened in the sake of Sam Bankman-Fried's case. Well, the allegations in the reporting on Sam Bankman-Fried is massive criminal violations using straw donors, funneling money uh, illegally into different places to influence elections. Um, and that is very different than what we're seeing when people normally use the campaign finance system, although, uh, frankly, it is legalized corruption in many respects. That doesn't just apply to crypto. That applies to all the dark money that's now allowed and unleashed by the Supreme Court decisions. But so there's two just two parts there. One is the criminal activities, and that should be investigated, prosecuted just ruthlessly by the Southern District of New York. Separately, we have a campaign finance system that allows the crypto industry and other industries to exercise inordinate influence on our campaigns. And crypto is spending their predatory profits uh, to buy as many politicians as possible to get their special interest legislation passed that will result in them getting the appearance of regulation without the reality of regulation, and that threatens customers, investors, yes. and financial stability. Hey, Dennis, hey, Dennis. In the past, you've referred to crypto as a lawless industry, and I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. in your opinion, is there any good use for crypto out there right now? Well, you don't have to have my opinion. I mean, it's objectively true. They've had 14 years to come up with a legitimate, um, socially useful use for crypto, and they have not. Crypto is only useful for wild speculation, gambling, and it's the preferred financial product of criminals worldwide, from money laundering, tax evasion, ransomware, 
uh, narco-terrorism, sex trafficking. I mean, we see it every day. This is not my opinion. These are the objective facts. There is no legitimate use case for crypto, period, full stop. It's like all these investors are being sucked into this financial product, uh, having, in my view, many of them having no idea. You can't do a discounted cash flow. You can't look at revenue. You look at all their other investments, and this particular financial product has nothing similar to them. And mm. that is a big red flag that's going to come home soon Dennis. at some point when Dennis. crypto crashes again. Dennis, when you think about just how much attention is being paid to crypto, when you think about uh, what is happening um, among congressmen in Washington, when you think about what's happening at the Justice Department, record-breaking fines we've seen here, do you think that some attention has been taken away from the traditional financial industry to focus more on crypto here? And do you think that attention makes sense? Well, you're right, Sonalia, that there has been a, a diversion of resources, time, and attention to crypto because of the widespread high-profile lawbreaking going on. Regulators and prosecutors necessarily have to do that when you have an industry breaking the law as broadly and frequently as crypto is. Um, but you're also right that that's a diversion of resources from all sorts of other regulation and prosecution where there's illegal behavior. Uh, and criminal behavior. is There's finite resources, there's finite time and attention. Uh, the prosecutors and regulators have limited budgets. Uh, crypto seems to have almost a limitless budget. And the problem there, of course, is predatory conduct generates enormous profits. Mm -hmm. But the industry, to go back, is, is a lawless industry. It is taking the position, and it's the only industry that I can think of ever that has taken the position that no laws apply to them. The security laws don't apply. The commodity laws don't apply. And they're basically saying to prosecutors and regulators, catch me if you can. And that's, that is just rank lawbreaking. Dennis, I know there are certainly many folks we've had on our air who would disagree with you. We've got to get you back on and uh, chat with some of those folks. Yeah. Uh, the industry is certainly <laughs> not a monolith, but we appreciate your comments. Dennis Kelleher, the president and CEO of Better Markets, joining us here on Bloomberg Crypto. And coming up next, we're going to